couples shouldn't do it? Well, I spoke to Doris Wawero, and I wanted to know her take. I think it's a good thing to do when you've not dated somebody for a long time. So, for example, if you've known a guy for a few months and you guys are old enough to live alone, I think you can live together. It saves rent. Economic wise, huh? So you're talking about the economy here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're looking for. Nothing else, isn't it? <laughs> Huh? Yes. Um, <laughs> and you know, because you, when you get married, you have to live with this person mm. uh, for, you know, a very long time. Right. So why not, you know, see what it is like to live with a person before you actually get to marry them? Mm. But yeah. Uh, but at the same uh, time, Doris, I have some people saying that if this is a good thing, why so many couples who have lived together before... When they get married, the marriage breaks down. I, I've read some statistics from a website, foryourmarriage.com. Okay, that's interesting. Anyway, I think that like living together before marriage does not affect your life after marriage. So even if they divorce, um, it just means, you know, the two of them are not compatible. So even if they didn't live together before getting married, they would still end up, you know, being divorced. Despite not living together before. So it doesn't matter to you, you think? So, yeah, I don't think it matters to me, but I am saying I cannot do that because my family would kill me. You know, <laughs> That's another good question I want to ask you. What about African families? Do they allow? Yes. Like your parents will allow that to happen? No. My dad, I think my dad will come here and kill me. You know, knowing that. But right. You know, it's a different age, and the economy is really bad. Uh -huh. so why not save that money and use that money to pay dowry? See, like, it's a win-win. It's a win-win, huh? Yeah, because yeah. at the same time, I mean, the, the times have changed. I know with our parents' time, there's no way you could do that. But, I mean, yeah. with this time with the economy, as you say, with all this going on, sometimes it's economical. So, hey, I, I, I don't know. You tell me, but some African families too don't like to see that happening because they don't feel like you're respected to do that. But yeah. in reality, mm -hmm. people just don't tell their parents, but they do it, isn't it? That is so true. But when you have relatives who know what you're doing, mm -hmm. they're in real trouble. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so personally, I can do it. But what I'm saying is, I understand those people who do it. Mm, you know? Exactly. Yeah. So you understand they're, where they're coming from. I understand it, yeah, but I cannot do it. Oh, and you can't? I thought you, no. since you understand, you do it yourself. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Doris, tell us the truth. No, as I said earlier, my, my dad would come and kill me. But you, when you do it, you don't want your dad to know. You never tell him anyway. Whoever does, they don't tell their parents. Yeah, I don't think I can escape with that because I have my brother here. Mm. And I'm sure he would somehow, you know, end up knowing. He would not be pretty. But why do you think your brother of men and boys wouldn't like that to happen? But don't you see it's a double standard because some men do it and nobody says anything? Definitely. You know, it's African society. Like, it's all about double standards, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. You treat other women wrong, but you expect your, your sister to be treated right. How does that even work? I think it's just, you know, men, their ego, and, you know, they also have this protection thing with their sisters or their daughters. Thank you, Doris Weru. This is Let's Talk, and we are discussing cohabitation. Now back to the studio. Dan Brown, I know you're ready, but you say that you want to allow for ladies? Is that what it is? Yeah, ladies have to go first. Okay, let's do it. Emma, to you, my friend, do you I, I, think I it's I, a good thing to do uh, to have no, such a system or is not? Let me preface it by the fact that I am an African. And as okay. African women, we are raised to wait until we get married and get married. You know, technically you cannot even date in Africa without being looked upon as if you are like a not okay. <laughs> really? And then you expect to just jump from, okay, I'm this Miss Goody Two Shoes to, I'm getting married. I don't know how do you get married to somebody you don't even know. And nowadays there are no arranged marriages. And so uh, coming from that perspective, cohabitation as an African woman will probably not necessarily be great. It would probably be looked upon as a 
problem. But having been uh, in the U.S. of A for many years, I've learned to understand why people cohabit and I've learned to appreciate the whole art of cohabitation. And I really like to put it this way. If your better half pees on the bed still, at least you get to know and you get to decide that this, this is the worst part that you're going to leave for the rest of your life with. So that's kind of like my summary of it. I okay. it. And I think I dig it. Okay, well... Emma came to a perspective of an African woman. African woman, African parents, they want to see you stay at home and wait until the Mr. Right comes home. Then you leave at home with Mr. Right to get married. You don't live with anybody else, especially men when you're not married. That's what Emma says. And I believe because I understand how we do in Africa. But anyway, Karina Chowdhury, bring me your expertise here. You're from Asia. How about Asian women? I'm on the same page with Emma. Um, I'm from Bangladesh. I grew up there. And we have the same mentality. And uh, it's cohabitation in Bangladesh is not common. So our parents or that the, um, the previous generation definitely does not accept it the same way. But growing up in America... My point of view about cohabitation is I think it's I think it's good for a relationship. It's a it's a good way to get to know your partner. It's a good way to basically have a marriage but before getting into the before actually being married and having having that uh, like legally being binded together but this way you you get to be with each other you get to understand each other so i think cohabitation is a great thing but um it's definitely not accepted in my culture and if anybody does do it um it's kind of a secret because parents don't accept it but people do do it so <laughs> that's that's the reality of it they and just do it behind their parents back they just do it behind their parents back and you know you run into a lot of issues but it, it's important and personally i think it's a it's a good way to get to know each other so okay. i'm all for it you're all for it really I'm all for it. Oh, okay 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 <laughs> hey let's listen to danny brown what do you think about cohabitation my friend i mean it's not like so many African women won't do it, you know. I mean, right. for you it's different. It you is. know, you're an American born and raised, and maybe for you it's a different perspective altogether. What do you think about uh, cohabitation? I think it's tough. Um, especially if you think of it as a, like a guy mindset. Um, now, I can break it down to a lot of levels, um, but I'll stick to like the very basics right now and then get a little bit into it. Okay. Um, using your life for saving your life for one person and you're not doing anything with them for that one for like the longest time is going to make that one guy very upset now do you think if you are living with your girlfriend okay is this something that will help you towards your marriage or you think this will end up like these experts are saying that most of these unions don't end up in marriage in the first place because they've lived for so long hey why get married yeah why get married? I mean, because you look at it. <laughs> it happens in America a lot. <laughs> I mean, because... Uh, well, I personally, I don't think marriage is necessary. Okay. So, I mean, if you're committed to someone, then you're committed to someone. Well, marriage, in my opinion, doesn't change commitment. So Very true. Yeah. Because there's people all around the world right now, and I'm not putting you guys into a certain box, but a ring is a ring. It's just an object. It's not saying how faithful you are. You saying all those vows.